Hey everyone, I'm back, this time with a very special edition video. Recently I got the chance to sit down with Devil May Cry 5 director Hideaki Itsuno and producer Matt Walker to talk about the Devil May Cry series and some behind-the-scenes insight on DMC5. This interview was streamed live on the Capcom Fighters Twitch channel as part of an official community event. I want to give a big shout out to Matthew Edwards, who was the driving force in setting all of this stuff up with Capcom Europe and Japan. Before we start, I want you guys to keep a few things in mind. Since this interview was streamed, there were a few technical issues, like microphone volumes not being leveled out properly, desyncs, and at one point my internet completely dropped out on me. So when the screen suddenly shifts to Matt and Itsuno, that's what's happening there. Also, please forgive me, I was so nervous doing this interview, and when I'm nervous, I tend to say the word like a lot. So please understand, this was kind of a big deal for me. I was very starstruck. If you guys have been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I love a lot of Itsuno-san's work, so this was an absolute treat for me to talk to the man directly about his own video games. We talk about so many things, like why Itsuno wanted to explore Virgil's backstory and DMC3, talking Devil May Cry's real narrative theme, and what his favorite Resident Evil game is. You're not gonna want to miss this one, guys. Alrighty, I hope you got your coffee and are settled in. Please enjoy this very insightful conversation with the legend, Hideaki Itsuno. But uh, interviewing you guys, we've got the Sphere Hunter, Suzy. So we're going to bring her in on the stream now as well. All the way from Las Vegas. Oh, hello. Hi, everyone. How's it going, Suzy? How are you guys doing? Um, it's going good. It's a little late for me. What time is it for you right now? It, it is at 3.18 a.m. Oh, wow. <laughs> for me. Oh, so. oh, that's Massive well, respect. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Isuno-san says, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, w I wouldn't... um. I wouldn't miss this for the world, <laughs> so. But it's completely over to you now, so like you've got your questions lined up. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, just basic q and I've been wanting to do for a while now, and we finally get to do it. Um, so my first question for you two beautiful gentlemen is, when you guys sat down and started planning out the development of DMC5, how did you go about it? Did you have game design or story ideas from when you finished DMC4 that you picked up again? Or was everything made from scratch for DMC5? デビル5発音、発音はどういう感じだったのか。まあ、最初じゃあ、ま、元々や、やりたかったけど、以前やりたかったけどできなかったなゲームプレイがあったのか、ストーリーはそういう感じか。じゃあ、全然フルスクラッ
what inspired your interest in exploring Virgil's story originally in Devil May Cry 3? Oh, that's a good question. Ma, デブルバージョンのデブルシーが出てされるね、バージョンのね、人気のいろいろ出てると思うんですけど、まあそこでまあそれを見てちょっと思ったんですけど、デブルスリーのねバージョンのストーリーはどこから来たんですか？どういう発
Dante and then we've added Nero, right? When we added Nero, how can we basically make it so that the control itself is essentially the same, right? Because it's the same game. But how can we then add different play to the experience so that ideally the player is using different parts of their brain depending on whether they're using Dante or Nero. And then, of course, uh, in DMC4 SE when we added Trish and Lady, and then in DMC5 when we added V. ま、プレイを取り込んでしょうね。敵はね、難しいのよ。一個一個こんな敵こんな敵って考えて、まずはその出てくる順番どうして戦いたいとかね。それぞれ適ごとに出てくる順番、戦う順番とその遊びのテーマっていうのを先に決めて、そこからデザイン設定考えていく感じ。え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え
to an extent, you know, the way that people know him, know him you know, DMC3 and DMC4, uh, but also adding him in a way that he's going to be fun, but yeah, not be too overpowered, too underpowered. Uh, it was a constant struggle. I can imagine that could be quite difficult to accomplish because he is like this like big boss character. And it's like, if you want to play as that character, he should feel super powerful. But finding that balance is like super important at the same time. まあ、みんなちょっと簡単すぎたかも、今回ね。新キャラはね、強くしないとね。新キャラはね、やっぱ強くするんですよ。これはね、いつもの知恵ですよ。新キャラは強くします。You know, yeah, and, and Virgil, is what someone was saying, and frankly, you know, Virgil's pretty strong, and we made him pretty strong this time. You guys probably might even feel that to an extent. Uh, and I said, yeah, you know, that was, that was the case with 4 se too. He says, yeah, you know, he says, I got a secret for you. When you when you make a new character, you want them to be strong. And you want them to be strong so that people will enjoy playing. Makes sense, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you want people to focus on, like, the new character, it's like, exactly. gotta hook them right away. Um, moving on to some of the more personal elements of character design. What's the process for designing Dante's weapons like? How do you go from a longsword to a guitar? to a motorcycle. It's got to be really difficult coming up with move sets for totally unconventional weapons. あの、ま、じゃあ、ま、ダンテのブキにじゃあ、どうやってデザインデザインするかしみたいな。ま、結局ま、体験も。うん。結局ま、次はぶっ飛んだ考えでま、ギターで攻撃する。で、ま、キャ
That's but that you know you're right and and the hat in particular you know that was something I remember when we were coming up with those ideas and uh, and I loved their idea that well you're going to use your red orbs you know you're going to use your red orbs because it's going to be this fantastic risk reward thing where you know you're as a player I know as a player what I I I hoard stuff I really hoard stuff. like so for instance whenever I play like a Final Fantasy game I always have like tons of elixirs at the end I never use elixirs because I keep them. Um, and for the hat, there his idea that yeah, well you're going to use the red orbs and you can you can keep them, you can keep those red orbs, and you're going to be able to use them to buy all these cool moves. But you know if you really want to, if you want to spend those red orbs, spend your own hard earned cash essentially, uh, then you can that'll be like one easy way to take stuff out if you really want. To. But it really makes the player think, right? Oh yeah, for sure, and it's definitely very refreshing especially for a Devil May Cry game, because it's like, as you said, like, once you unlock, like, all the skills and stuff like that, and maybe, right. like, max out your item, like, inventory or whatever, it's like, I just have all these red orbs laying around doing nothing. Yep, yep, yep. So it's like, yep. you've essentially, like, added ammo to right. a Devil May Cry weapon, which is super right. cool, in my opinion. And it's like, yeah, oh, hey. スキルとか全部解除して。そうそうそう。そうそう。あの、アマとお金をどう使うかっていうのもね、デビルメクライ5は一つ、あの課題だったんですよね。アマっちゃうから。そうですよね。最初から考えて。そうそうそうそう。い
、ギリギリまでできなかったね。いや、ビーコソはそうですよね。うん、割と発売の1年前まではね。ギリギリ、だから、例のね、あの、ね、マイクロソフトの偉いさんにお見せした日にできてて、うん、面白いってなって、ゴーなったんでね,ね,ね。ギリギリまでかかったね。本当にギリギリ。うん、yeah, it, it was really v it took us a long time to finally get that balance right, right to really get、uh, that gameplay to be something that was going to be a lot of fun.、Uh, to the point where, you know, you guys may remember that we were, Microsoft was kind enough to help us announce the game, put us on stage at E3 to announce DMC5. And so, pretty late in the cycle, you know, we were showing them builds of the game. And、uh, for, for a while internally, we had people like, look, V, I don't know about V, you know, but one of the kind of one of the last times before we sealed the deal,、um, where we decided we were going to announce at E3,、uh, we, we brought a bill to Microsoft and we, we could see it right there and then that,、uh, okay, this worked, this worked. V's gameplay is a lot of fun. Everybody's having a lot of fun. Yeah, that's how, that has to be like such a, Nerve wracking experience because he's so different just from the traditional like action game archetype for like any game. So, right, right. Oh, no、yeah. doubt. No doubt.、Um, I'm curious to know how the sound design and gameplay teams work together on DMC music. For example, a song like Devil Trigger is the recurring theme of Five, it evolves and gets remixed as the player progresses. Does the sound team watch cutscenes or gameplay? To develop these tracks, or is it all a clear vision from day one? The sound of the Kikaku, for example, is a very clear vision from day one. The sound of the Kikaku is a very clear vision from day one. The sound of the Kikaku is a very clear vision from day one. The sound of the Kikaku is a そうすると、まあ、そのリメイクとかでどういう雰囲気を出すかっていうのは考える、考えないといけないんだろうなと思う。まあ、サウンド、サウンドチームはじゃあそうやって、まあ、作曲してるときに、どうですかね、なんかゲームプレイの映像を見ながら作ってるそうでもない。ああ、デビルメイクライに関してはもシリーズもね、あの、続いてるし、あと、今回その映像最終到達点、どんな感じの映像のゲームにする、まあ、今見たらもうね、完成品だからわかるけど、レベル4からどんだけ変えるの全部、最初の頃にちゃんと打ち合わせして、こんな絵になります。こんな絵に合わせる音楽でお願いします。っていうのと、サウンド側から、今回、こんな新しいことしたいんだ。っていう話と、で、新しいキャラってどんなキャラなのっていう話も全部最初にすごい時間とって話して、で、その新しい技術とサウンドのやりたかった新しいチャレンジ、今回出したかった映像とかキャラクター、綺麗に合わさってるんで、今回も特に大成功しましたもんね。本当にね、はい、本当に素晴らしかった。うん、That's a really interesting question. And it starts out with, it starts out at the very beginning, where Itsuno san gets all the leads together. And he's been doing this for a while now. He's been doing this for years. All his different projects. Right at the beginning of the project, he gets all his leads together. And、uh, they go on a retreat. They go on a retreat. Usually it's at、uh, there's this little, this little facility that Capcom has.、Uh, we, the devs here, we can actually like, stay at this place. And it's, like, it's, it's, a, it's what we call a yoka in Japan. It's not, not quite a hotel, it's, it's, it's something a little more personal.、Um, and he gets all everybody together and they all share their ideas of okay, what is the game going to look and feel like? You know, and, they, and they established that at the very beginning.、Uh, and in doing that, you know, they, they all get on the same page. So, this is before anything's really been made, but they all get on the same page about, okay, this is what it should feel like. This is what it should be like.、Uh, and for DMC5 in particular,、uh, the sound team said, look, we want to try some new stuff. We have some ideas we think would be really cool,、uh, especially、um, in terms of, for instance, the idea that they had where the songs, then the battle themes would progress. In relation to how you were doing the style, right?、Uh, and so we really lucked out because all of those ideas really coalesced, I think, fantastically in terms of you know, both the way that the, the sound worked out, the way those new sound systems worked out,、uh, and 
including a look in the field of the game as well. Yeah. Yeah, Especially, and one of the big things too was having the vocals in the tracks the way they are. Sound team was amazing. Oh man, those, the sound guys, they really knocked it out with introducing these battle themes that have these fantastic vocals that, you know, very catchy tunes, right? Oh yeah, for sure. And it's, it's basically flawless when you're playing. Once you know like the song and how it reacts to your ranking in battle, it's like so it's like the definition of hype when you like <laughs> can set things up at like the perfect moment and then hear like bury the light come in or whatever. Like it's so much fun. <laughs> Devil May Cry has always been a very violent and serious video game series, but it also has a lot of humor and wholesomeness. What's the key to successfully balancing those things out in the storytelling? すごい。あの、あれば、やっぱりユーマもね、ね、ちゃんと混ざってますし、あの、世界観<笑> あの、それをシナリオ担当も、ま、僕もそうだし、みんなすごいちゃんと理解して、この世界好きで守って、作ってるのあると思いますよ。うん。いいですよね。はい。年寄りも若い人も楽しめるかなと思ってます。Well, it it really and this kind of goes for Capcom games just in general. Uh, but it kind of starts with the idea that frankly, uh these guys Including Kamiya-san, you know, back when he was making DMC1, uh, they were very heavily inspired by kind of Hollywood films. And, and, you know, Hollywood films, like the kind of Hollywood films that maybe, you know, were popular a little while ago. You know, maybe not as, as maybe not something as recent as like, you know, the 2000s. Um, but, you know, there are, these, there are these kind of films that, at least, you know, for old guys like us growing up that we saw, and they had that kind of balance, you know, in, all, in, in those kind of different elements. Um, and, uh, you know, we always kind of see these films, and there's something about them that, that we really love. Uh, and we tend to integrate that into that kind of knowledge into our stories. The idea that, well, you know, the, the right amount of you said the seriousness, the right amount of kind of whole, whole, wholesomeness, humor. Um, if you can mix that all together right, then yeah, you can kind of make something that kind of feels good for everybody. And so that's really what we try to do, kind of what we start from. That's a good way to describe it, I think. It's just like Devil May Cry games are like feel good games because it's like <laughs> when, when they get heavy. They get really heavy and you like really feel for it like the characters and stuff like that and like the situations they're in but like when it becomes like fun it's like the most fun you're ever gonna have right. you know so what made you guys want to focus on the theme of legacy for dmc 5 story every main character has baggage from their past more specifically parental baggage dante and virgil with sparta nero with virgil nico with agnes Lady with Arkham and even Trish with uh, Mundes. あの、ま、デブルファイデマワリトネのストーリー的にレガシーが感じようかなと思うんですよね。特にあの、両親に対してね、ま、探偵ね。探偵バージュは。スパーダ。え、ま、デロアバージュ。で、ま、トリシティは
いろんなまあ愛があるんだけど親子もちょっと兄弟もそうだしねあの当然一緒にいるパートナーに対しての愛もそうだし、ね、先輩とかねお兄さんとかもいろんな愛今回もあらゆるもんを全部入れ込んじゃえっていうだって自分自身に対してのね憎しみと愛情あったでしょ ?V ねとかね,そうですねだからこれはねもう毎回そうですそのうん愛おしい気持ちっていうのを大切にいつもストーリーを作っています,そうです、ねはい、Well that really comes from いつもさんも saying this is something we've talked about but、uh, the kind of theme that that いつもさん has always kind of included throughout the series has been love and you know that can that can be I can see love too <laughs> he says this is kind of, this is kind of embarrassing but uh that could be love for parents obviously like you're talking about be love for your brother you know in the case of uh can it be love for yourself and he's an awesome brings up Like V, for instance, right? V's got this, this internal conflict, right? Where it's very much, he loves himself, he misses himself to a certain extent. He kind of loves himself to a certain extent, right? But yeah, it all kind、oh, of、yeah. goes back to、yeah. the idea that it, it all, it's all, I, ultimately, the underlying theme should be love throughout the whole series. Yeah, that's, that makes perfect sense. I, I never really thought of it like that. It was always just sort of like, I always thought of it as like legacy, like everyone's trying to live up to their what came before them. But I think love is like definitely a prevalent like theme throughout the entire series and like just trying to like hold on to <laughs> whoever you have left, you know. And I, I guess that does make a lot of sense when you think about Nero and like DMC5, for instance, like towards the、That's、end of the、point. game. It's just、That's、like,、oh, it's just like this.、Question. This like adopted like punk kid who's never had a family, and he's just like, he's gonna fight tooth and nail to keep it, you know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really great connection there. I don't, yeah, that's good. Yeah, no, ma, no, ma, no, 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 やっぱり愛情、愛情で、要は、あの、だダンテとバージョンを失いたくないんですよね。もうね。ね。もう、もう大事な人を失いたくないんですよ。ね。そうそうそう。Yeah, that's cool. That's a, that's a really great connection. He was going. My final question for Itsuno-san is,、um, which of Dante's various costume designs is your favorite? Oh, あのじゃあ最後の質問です。ああ、ね、ダンテの一番。そうだね。あのね、好きというかね、一番かっこいいのはね、2だと思うんだよね。へえ、2? なるほどね。2だけね、コートとちょっと違うのよ、形が。はい、そうですよね。ベストと、まあ、スカートみたいなのが一緒になった形で、あれは多分、一番かっこいいし、普通の人が来たら一番かっこ悪いと思うんだよ。なるほどね。<笑>うん、ダンテがあのスタイルで着ないとかっこよくないんで、<笑>スーの衣装が多分一番かっこいいかなと思って。Well, look, I, I, I think, I don't know whether it's my favorite or not, but the one I think looks the coolest is the one from DMC2. And you probably remember that, yeah, the, the coat, the, the style of that coat in that game, the time that it's been like that. And he says, it's, it's this kind of style where, frankly,、uh, it would only ever look good on him. Right? Any normal person would try to pull that off. It would not right? because it's Dante. Yeah, D- DMC2's、uh, Dante design is just fantastic. I personally think like, all the character designs are great in that game. But yeah, Dante, perfect. Kyoto design. Oh, that was there. Well, it turns out, the,、um, just so you know, the, the, the designer, the character designer on DMC2. Guy named Daigo Ikeno. If you guys played Street Fighter, you probably, Street Fighter fans, probably Ikeno san.、Um, he also worked on DMC5 and he did designs. Actually, a lot of, a lot of like, kind of his, some of his early concepts are things that we put like in books and like showed in presentations. 
、まあ、あの雪野さんのねあのいろんなデザインも公開しましたよね、デブルファイブの、うんうんうん、例えばあの、手を当てたとこあったりとか、2、ねうん、っぽかったね。確かにね。He's like, yeah, some of those designs kind of, they were kind of similar to what he made for Dante and DMC2. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Daigo Ikeno is a legend without a doubt. I, I just, I love the parallel between Lady from Devil May Cry and、mm-hmm. Makoto from Street Fighter. <laughs> like, there's a, there's a visual parallel, which is very much appreciated, I think. Lady and Makoto. Can I ask one more question? Is that okay,、um, Edwards? Let's do it, yeah. Okay, Itsuro san, Ichiban Skina, Bioa, Nondeska. Ichiban Skina? Ichiban Skina, Bio, Bio, Bio Hazard. Bio Hazard. Bio Hazard. Ah, that's it. Eh, Oh, Ne, Honto, Jitsuan, eh, Last Escape, now, eh, three. Ah, eh, that's it. Ah, Ne, Yapare, Tsui Sekisha, eh, Metta Kuagata, eh, oh, 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 oh. で、物語もコンパクトでしょで、実はその、面白くて、ギュッて言ったら面白かったのは3で、世界観が好きなのは、実はね、コードベロニータなんだよね。おぉ、<笑>ちょっと怪しい。You know, the question was, for anybody that doesn't speak Japanese, the,、uh, the question was, <笑> It's on-san, what's your favorite Resident Evil game?、Uh, and he says, Honestly, the, my favorite one is probably RE3 Last Season.、Um, There's something about, first of all, the, the,、um, the nemesis, that having the nemesis just constantly like that was something that was just terrifying back then.、Uh, and and there's was, there was something great about the story being kind of comp- as compact as. But in terms of setting, he says, I think my favorite was probably Code Veronica. Code Veronica, there was just all kinds of crazy shit going on. So that, that yeah, for sure. Interesting setting. So, Well,、uh, uh, Biohazard Last Escape, RE3 Nemesis. It's my second favorite. So,、oh, I think which, one's your, which one's your favorite then?、Um, the Resident Evil 1 remake on GameCube.、Cool. That one's、ah, my favorite. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes plenty of sense. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. But anyway, that's, that's all the questions I have for you guys today. I really appreciate、um, you guys sitting down with me and having a conversation about game design. It's honestly like a dream come true for me. Like, I, you know, I make my job is to make like these super long videos on YouTube about game design and like in like Devil May Cry and like Resident Evil and stuff like that. So, this has been an absolute just treat for me. So, thank you guys、um, so much. The pleasure was all ours. And, you know, we were, we were telling you this beforehand.、Um, just so everybody knows, frankly, this whole, this whole stream came about. The original, the original reason that we decided to, make, to do this was a couple months ago. It was, it was probably right around when we had announced DMC5 SE.、Uh, Susie had DM'd me and she's like, hey, it'd be really cool to kind of like do maybe something where we could do、uh, maybe like a commentary or something like that. And so right after that, you know, Uh, Edward started talking to us about okay, when can we start actually doing some streams for DMC5 SE?、Uh, and I said, Look, you know, Susie reached out, let's, let's see what we can get going here. So, it's really thanks to you that this is all happening to begin with. And、uh, the other thing I wanted to say was、um, Susie actually shared these questions with us. And、uh, both Isun san and I looked at this and we thought these questions were great. Isun san specifically said, You know, these questions are so good, we could literally like spend hours just talking. Actually, it's, it's slightly abbreviated. You did a great job. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much.、Um, I will say、um, big shout outs to uh, my friend uh, Charlie over on the Gaming Brit show YouTube channel. He's also like a huge Devil May Cry fan. We actually workshopped the questions together, and like, I think we came up with some pretty interesting ones on,、uh, on the design front of、uh, Devil May Cry for sure. But yeah, thank you so much for loving the questions. <laughs> It's great. <laughs> All right, okay, but that is the end of part one of the、uh, Devil May Cry community stream. Thank you very much to、uh, Susie, the Sphere Hunter, for bringing those awesome questions.
Thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. We're, we're gonna Thank take you so a, much uh, for having me. That's awesome. It appreciate was awesome. It. Like, the, like the level of insight that that kind of like um, helped get out of Walker and it's sooner. Like I feel I understand a bit more about the DMC universe now. So that was awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you guys.